Senator the chairman Cardone of Blue is Ribbon. recognized. Mr. President, I was originally just going to make a manifestation concerning the speech of the distinguished gentleman, uh, Senator Janis. But I'm constrained to act uh, for a couple of reasons. There is already a pending hearing that has been going on. We just had a cathartic scenario where we had to replace, and very reluctantly, some of us, including myself, reluctantly replaced the chairman of the Committee on Justice. Now again, we are faced with another scenario here where obviously the remarks made by the distinguished senator seems to question the ability of every person within the Committee of Justice and Human Rights to be able to appreciate the evidence and the matters being presented before it. I think that is very untoward and I believe it's a slur on the committee because we have tried to be very, very fair. Second, I find it distasteful, and I don't mean any disrespect to the distinguished gentleman, that from what I heard from the speech, it would appear that he was talking for the witness. Precisely, Mr. Chairman, during the hearings, I asked who presented this witness. I asked Senator Trillanes, I asked Senator De Lima, and, uh, and nobody said, no, she disappeared. And Senator De Lima later on went and said he met the wit she met the witness during the Department of Justice. We let that go, Mr. President, because it's not fair to the committee suddenly for a witness to sprung out of nowhere because we don't want to be led to a wild goose chase. But having said that, we took the extra precaution, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, that we provide counsel for the witness. Because, Your Honor, the first time he was presented, it appeared that he did not have counsel. And as you all know, any statements made in a committee could be used against him in a court of law. And that is why we postponed and we suspended the sessions until we could get a counsel, and we took great pains to make sure the counsel be presented. Now, Mr. President, it is the right of every senator here, and that is why we have a Senate. It's a place where we can all agree or disagree with the right temperament, Mr. President. We cannot poison the air of the Senate by coming out with reckless remarks or having somebody translate what the witness said because the witness is the best witness. You cannot supplant the witness with your own observations. And if that has to be done, this representation as chairman would have said, go ahead. You may interpolate, you may, you may ask the witness questions so that he could clarify if you thought that the witness was not being given the fair chance to explain himself. And that we did. If I'm not mistaken, I, I was even wondering why Mr. Trillanes did not even complete his 10 minutes of interrogation. If I remember correctly, he was done by eight minutes. I would have extended, as I did with the others, as I did with Senator De Lima, that you extend so that you can make amplification or the witness can amplify his statements even if it would appear that he is being guided. Because what are we here for? We're not here to pillory anybody. We're here to seek the truth. And from that truth, legislation will be recommended, Mr. President. We're not here to say he's better or he's not. As it is, our country is beginning to be the laughing stock of the whole world. And forgive me for saying that. It would appear that this country has gotten down to the level of, in our investigations, whether in lower house or in the upper house, we have to produce the best criminals to testify. Who is the better criminal? Those before the lower house? A self-confessed criminal in the upper house? Every more reason, Mr. President. 
we have to make sure that we interpolate. That is why it is not kosher. There are members of the committee that we were making judgment. Certainly not against Senator Pacquiao, who I thought gave a very cogent, logical questioning. If you cannot stand by what you say, why do, how do you expect me to believe you? In Tagalog, maniniwala ka pa sa tao na sasalita na ito, ha? sabi niya, opo, ikaw ba hindi ka nagsasalita, hindi nagsasabi na ito, hindi ka maniniwala, eh kayo nang sinasabi mo nito, babago-bago ka, hindi kita mapagkatiwalaan, paano kita pagkakatiwalaan kung babago-bago ka? Words to that effect. Mr. President, Sen Senator Luxon also made mention about the fact not aiding or not. I think with the peers of art said the crime was not committed in McDonald's. Mr. President, Mr. Luxon also came out and said uh, General uh, Matigliano came in and spoke about the fact that there were no agents or entities under his under his jurisdiction or under his command that uh, were sent to anybody including Congressman Nograles, Mr. President. I can go to many, many details. You know, Mr. President, I take time. I listen. I try to be as fair as I can. And Mr. President, to me it is unfair if we start judging our people. Uh, that's why I don't want to embarrass anybody. I suspend the motion and calmly tell our people, whether it's Senator Caetano when he was going out of bounds, or Senator De Lima, or Senator Trillanes, that I will call you down if you continue with this. I could have made many, many inferences because the witness tended to look at Senator Trillanes and Senator De Lima at the time, in fact, I just made it, mention of it casually. No, I'm not going to do judgment. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff, Mr. President. I will sweat the truth. That is what we're here for. And if I violate that, nobody in this Senate will respect me if I'm seen as going on one side against the other. Because fairness is the only shield against being told that you are biased. That is why I plead to our colleagues here, if there is any question about the things that have been expressed here, you can do it in the hearing, Mr. President. That's where it is, not on the session hall. Are we going to second guess now every committee? Anytime uh, Senator uh, uh, Rio de Veras talks about labor, I will go up and say, oh, I disagree. With all the things that were said there, there's never going to be an ending. That is why there is a system of committees. And the committees are given the latitude. And it is up to us if we want to have more time to ask questions. There is no limitation. There is no franchise. You can ask for fairness and equity. Mr. Chairman, I would like to amplify. I would like to ask a question. Uh, I think because of the tenderness of the age of this uh, person, or maybe because of lack of education, or his inability or facility to express himself, I would like to ask him a question. I would like to ask him in Tagalog. I would like to ask him in Visaya, which we did, Mr. President. That's why it took us long. When was the last time you heard a hearing? Start at 2.30 and ended up at 8.15 in the evening, Mr. President. And so, to me, I know that Senator Trillanes perhaps did not have that in his mind, that he would question the integrity of the proceedings. You know that I did not ask for this committee. I did not ask for the Blue Ribbon Committee. When everybody was angling for it, Senator Zemiri and all of you will know that I never asked for any committee. I've never done that. And whatever committees I've had in the past here was given to me because I value the respect of my peers. If they think I am qualified to handle a hearing, if I, they think I'm qualified with my integrity and my perspicacity to work, then I leave it up to them. I cannot demand. Certainly, I will not go in there and say, I will want that committee just because I want power. 
That's the easy thing to do. I gave up my commission on appointments for, for others here. I gave up certain emoluments in dissent for our friends here. I'm very liberal when it comes to that. I have the highest respect for everybody. But respect has its bounds, and that's why I caution everybody here. Now, going to this other matter, Mr. President. When you, when any member in this august body starts using harsh words, <coughs> Mr. President, I'm astounded. We're not here to see who can beat each other in a fisticuffs. I'm sure nobody's going to try and do that with Manny Pacquiao. You know, intimidate him and uh, try to fight with him. I think that's going beyond. This is a test of mind, of will, of sincerity. And so there's no place in the Senate for that kind of language. Certainly, I was almost going to jump up in my chair and say, Mr. President, may I ask for a minute suspension? But suddenly, that is not right, Mr. President. Forgive me. That is not right. And we should not allow that here. Neither should we prolong this situation if we allow Senator Coricana to prove his manhood simply by the strength of his muscles. Because muscles he doesn't have. Maybe he has mental muscle. I don't know whether he has got physical muscle. And certainly I could have, if I were chairing, I would have told Senator Trillanes, don't try Mr. Caetano to embrace Senator Trillanes to break the ice. I would have said, I don't think you are his type. <laughs> so Mr. President, as I speak here today, I object to the fact that this is going to be referred to the Committee on Public Accountability. Mr. President, if there is somebody here, and I also would like to join in the process, put my name under the uh, leadership of Senator Soto, who in spite of his claims that he has never been a majority floor leader so many times, you know, that's a sign of, uh, as we call in Tagalog, humility. And so having said that, Mr. President, I do not subscribe to the fact that anybody can say here, or even the Senate President can say here, we will refer to the committee. At least we should refer to the committee on rules. And a caveat, Mr. President, when we refer this to the Blue Ribbon Committee, we must remember that harsh words such as mass murder is uncalled for. That is reserved for Hitler. That is reserved for Stalin. That is reserved for uh, the person in Cambodia. I forget his name right now. Pol Pot. Pol Pot. These are our countrymen. And that's we're ready to come out and show the proof of that. And that's the beauty of democracy, Mr. President. The Constitution allows us to hold the highest official of the land in a process called impeachment. We've seen that happen. President Estrada went through impeachment. And if it is the desire of any one of us in this chamber so to do, let us follow the rules. If you give it, Mr. Senate, Mr. President, to the Committee on Accountability, I cannot accept it. Because it's going to be a waste of the taxpayers' money. As it is, who are we going to call? And once we call, we still have to pass it on to the impeachment committee in Congress. I think that's a waste of time of taxpayers' money. Let's cut to the chase. If anybody in this chamber or anybody out there, from the boonies of the Cordilleras to the urban cities in our country, feels that they have evidence so to do, go ahead. Sure. The Filipino. You know, I, I call it the colonial hangover, will say, Malaking kalaban, wala kang laban. Many of us have passed through that crucible, Mr. President. I think the rules will tell us that I cannot accept that and will not accept it, and I'm not allowed to accept it under the rules. 
because that heads to a process called impeachment. And so, Mr. President, uh, with all due respect to Senator Trillanes, I again, I do not seek to lecture. Sometimes in my old age, I tend to muse. I'd like to think what a young senator in the refectory said to me just a few minutes ago. Is this the Congress or the Senate that I ambition for? And he's asking me to quote him, uh, Senator William Gachaya, I'm sorry, uh, Senator Villanueva was the one who said that. See, so even, even all of us, like the many of our people, cannot even, no, as we see, that's what I mean. You have to listen, and I'm glad you listen. Good for you. And that's why we all have to listen, Mr. President. And if he wants to talk, he can speak up there. And he can make the right correction. So, Mr. President, all in levity and all in friendship and candor, I must reject Check. and maybe ask the Senate mm -hmm. President to direct it to the Committee on Rules for proper disposition. Thank you very much, Mr. President.